Hello, my name is William. I'm part of the product marketing team at GitLab. And in this video, I'd like to tell you about some, how to use some product manage, uh, some project management parts of GitLab. In particular, let's take a look at issues, labels, and issue boards. So to show you how I use these and how you might be able to as well, here is an issue I'm working on. Uh, an issue is a discrete unit of work. This is a deliverable, something you need to get done. And in this case, I need to do a kickoff for my market requirements for GitOps. And this issue is where I capture that work, I define what needs to be done, and I can collaborate with others by adding comments and, and add related issues, et cetera. In a previous uh, video, I talked about epics and milestones. And so in this video, I wanna talk about the labels. Now think of labels as uh, a way to categorize your uh, issues. In other types of software that I've used, sometimes this concept is called a category, uh, sometimes this concept is called a tag, or maybe sometimes this concept is called a folder. You might be able to think of everything you stick in a folder. If I wanna put all these issues of work into a folder, maybe, but think of it more like, how do I wanna categorize these or how do I want to tag these? Uh, and so these are some labels that I have applied to this kickoff. So you can see that this kickoff is, uh, you know, a product marketing management uh, issue. And so it's labeled with a PMM label. It's currently a top priority for me. So it's, you know, label number one. This is uh, an internal for me because this is uh, internal enablement. When I get this done, this is not necessarily an external asset I'll generate, but it's market requirements help the rest of my team when I generate that. It's part of the GitOps use case, which is uh, what I'm responsible for at GitLab. And so all of the things that I work on that are responsible for GitOps, I tag as GitOps. Another use case I'm responsible for is cloud native. So I might tag, I'll tag other issues that are part of that use case with that label. So you can see each of these labels uh, are to categorize for something. And the way that that would work, for example, this is how I personally most often use labels in GitLab. Uh, I use what's called this uh, issue list view. And what's nice about this is you get uh, a set of a way to search and filter. So for example, this is showing me all of the issues that have that are within this strategic marketing and product marketing project that have the label GitOps. And I might want to say, for example, show me all of the ones that have that label that are assigned to me. And I can filter by that view. I might furthermore want to say, show me all of them that are in the current milestone, which for us is called uh, Bangalore. So I'm using this as a, as a way to filter down. And now, so I can see these are, the, these are the three issues that are assigned to me that are in the current milestone that are part of my GitOps use case. So this is, this is like the stuff I'm working on right now. Now what's really nice about this is this URL, uh, I can bookmark that or I can copy and paste that. So you can see if I open up a new tab and I go to that URL, it's gonna load that filtered view right away. So this is, a, this is a very powerful tool. This is bookmarkable. You can set a bunch of filters and come back to this. So this is kind of what I do. Uh, I filter in this way. I might, you know, you could have filter for a different assignee. There's a lot of different, you know, who created. I want to look at what are the issues I created. Um, but in particular, I, I use labels here a lot. So I might not just say for assignee. I might say, show me all the ones that are use case. And I might do like another label here, uh, potentially. I'll do another label and we'll say this label is anything with a P1. Uh, or let's actually do this one. So this is saying, show me everything that is part of the GitOps use case that has a priority one label, which uh, right now is probably a few things, but you could s filter by multiple labels, by assigning, et cetera. This is a powerful uh, way to do that. So I could see what are all the issues that are tagged with strategic marketing or labeled with strategic marketing. Uh, that's how labels uh, work. The other concept here is the idea of a scoped label. So some labels like this use case label, uh, I can apply as many of them as I want. 
Some of these labels are what we call scoped label, and they have two colons in between them. And when they appear, they have this pill format where the thing in front of the colon is here and the thing behind the colon. So this is a P1. The way a scoped label works is if I can only have one of that type. So of the P labels, I can only have a P1 or a P2 or a P3. And I'll show you how that changes in a moment. Um, another example of this is this marketing status is a scoped label. It's currently WIP for work in progress. If I were to change this to done, it gets rid of the work in progress. It can only have one of those. It can only have you know, started or work in progress or, or not started or work in progress or done. It can only have one of those or it can only be one of priority one, priority two, or priority three. It can only be one of internal or external. That's how these uh, scoped labels work. Whereas these unscoped labels, you know, for example, the GitOps use case. Uh, I could have maybe something as part of multiple use cases. I might have some, some broader work that I'm doing and it applies to multiple use cases. So it's an unscoped label. Uh, this is a PM, this has a PMM tag on it because I'm working on it, but it could also have technical marketing. It could also have alliances if we're all collaborating together. For example, here's one where it has a PMM tag because I'm working on it and also has the alliances tag because uh, Mayank is also working on this. So these are unscoped. You can have as many as you want. These are scoped when you, uh, you can only have one of that type. And uh, let's take a look then, that's labels. Let's take a look at issue boards. So here's uh, issue searches and let's take a look at issue boards. So here's an issue board and this is also known as a Kanban board. If you're familiar with Kanban board, uh, this, some people do this by writing things on a post-it note and they have columns and they might have to do, doing and done. And as you move the post-it note across the board, uh, that's the original kind of Kanban style. That's exactly what this is. Uh, so these columns here, they could be to do, doing and done. Uh, I don't have one set up like that right now, but that you could have that concept and you move the cards across the columns. The other way though is like by priority. So this is showing me, this is my board and this has a certain scope where this is, since it's my board, we can even call it like William Chia's board because there's a lot of Williams, like uh, William Arias as well. Uh, and it's assigned to me. So this is, this is showing all the issues that are assigned to me. That's what this board shows. And then the columns in this board are showing various priorities. So for example, this one to create a GitOps speaker deck is priority two, but I really want that to be priority one. So if I, if I open up the issue, I can see right now it's labeled with, with the P2 label. But if I'm on my board here and I drag it over to the P1 column, it's gonna remove this label and it's going to add this label automatically for me. So if I look at my issue here and I refresh the page, I can see it's now changed to a P1 and even my uh, log here shows that I, I changed the labeling here. It, in the way I did that, one way to do it would be to go to here to add the labels and change the labels here. Another way to do it would be with a smart action or a quick action. So if you do slash label and then tilde, and then here I want P colon colon, let's say P3. So if I had a comment with this quick action, quick actions are really nice. They're easy to add milestones. Uh, you could add a milestone, you could change the milestone, you could assign it with this. Let's say I also want to assign John to this one. Um, or, you know, maybe Cesar uh, will assign him as well. So these quick actions are nice. And when I assign this label of P3, when I comment with that, you can see it added the P3 and it removed the P1 because it's scoped, right? You can only have one of those. And it assigned Cesar for me. So when I, uh, you know, refresh here, I can see we're both assigned with that quick action. And if I go back to my board, I, I can see if I refresh my board, we'll give it a moment to load here. Now that speaker deck is in my P3 column. So the column represents a label. You, so you can set up your boards with various labels. It could be to do, doing, and done. 
It could be your priorities. That's how I like to view mine. In fact, this is a priority one, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it back to priority one. Um, and I am going to actually unassign uh, Cesar as well. I could do that. Cesar is gonna be asking me why. Why were you assigning me and unassigning me? Um, so that's uh, columns on a board by label. You could also have a board that is a column by assignee. So or what we call a list. So for example, you can see I can add a list here and uh, a list could be a label, a list could be an assignee or a list could be a milestone. So uh, this is the PMM team board and you can see there's a column for Tracy and there's a column for me and Cindy. And so this is showing, you know, at a team level, I can see what is all the work that's assigned to Tracy and what's all the work that's assigned to Cindy uh, or Samia. And so if I wanted to take an issue here, like, you know, review this uh, updated pricing page and I wanted to assign it to Tracy, if I dragged it over here, just like dragging on a board would change the label, here it would unassign me and it would assign Tracy. Moving cards across a board uh, takes that issue and it, and it changes whatever state that is. The last uh, way, as I mentioned, was milestones. And so for example, here's an ish, uh, example of a milestone board where here uh, it has a few milestones. These ones are set up by quarter, Q2, Q3, Q4. And if I thought, okay, this is not gonna get quite done in Q2, I wanna move it to Q3, or this is, we're moving this one out to Q4, this one is based on milestones. So uh, you can have a milestone based board, you can have an assignee based board, you could have uh, a, um, a label based board, and you can create a lot of different boards, you know? So you might have different boards with different views that you use. Um, but that's the kind of concept of an issue board and how to use that board as you move the cards across. It might show various progress like, you know, stage one and stage two and stage three, if you have different states that it needs to move through, uh, that would be the concept of a board. So labels are very powerful. They do a lot of things in GitLab. Um, hopefully I showed you a couple ways to use those. I like to use this view. This is my favorite. I like this better than the boards. Uh, I feel like I have more granular control, but uh, you can do this on a board as well, where if you have a, a board open, you can filter down to certain, uh, you know, by reaction, you could, so I could use a board as well. I could do the same thing. I could set to an assignee, you know, assigned to me and those kind of things. So you have this filtering capability. You can do in a list view or within a board. The board columns represent either labels or assignees or milestones. Uh, and the labels in general, we talked about scoped and unscoped labels. So Hopefully together with some of the other videos, this gives you an idea of how to use GitLab for project management and what some of the different components mean. Um, so I hope this one has helped you out and uh, have an awesome day.